Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the AF Oliver offices here in Bournemouth on the South Coast, um, where we are broadcasting Market Car 6 live. Uh, and I've got to tell you that I have had one or two comments over the last couple of weeks that perhaps we've done this recorded. Uh, I've just got two things to say to that. Uh, number one, here we go. It's exactly 8.31 as I speak to you right now. Uh, and number two, if you could have seen the consternation and panic in this little studio about 90 seconds ago when one of our managing laptops actually decided to have a hissy fit and go down, uh, then that really would have demonstrated that we're actually broadcasting live. It's a very important market cast today. Uh, an awful lot to get through in 30 minutes. I have completely changed the format. I've taken an awful lot of graphs and charts out, stuff of which you're going to be aware and which you can track down in other places. And I want to try and focus instead on exactly what's going to happen in this febrile market over the next three months and the next nine months. I think beyond that, well, heavens, you'd need a crystal ball. Um, it, it's interesting, for a little bit of fun, I was actually looking at, at forward forecasting by some people in the industry uh, earlier on this week, um, and I dug out the uh, Savills five-year forecast from 2017. It's a fascinating document looking at it five years further on. Uh, here we are in 2022. Uh, their their uh, projectioned or the projected growth for 2021 back in 2017 was 2.5%. Uh, I think in the end it was about 15%. But so that's you know, looking forward in this sort of market, that's where it gets you. Uh, so, but I want to kick off first of all with a, a brief word about the shirt. Um, I the, these shirts have become quite a thing over these various market casts. The choice of something predominantly black is not necessarily a message or a signal, it is pure coincidence. This shirt was actually chosen before the uh, new Prime Minister uh, and certainly the new Chancellor of the Exchequer. More of that in a moment or two. OK, so first of all, it's a full disclosure moment. I want to just own up right away. I am not a qualified university educated graduate. Uh, I make no apologies for sticking a picture of John Maynard Keynes on the screen there uh, and with all his interventionist policies. Uh, that have been tried and tested down the years. Um, uh, so straight away, first of all, I want to just throw that into the uh, equation. Uh, I'm also no politician. I couldn't resist uh, put, putting a picture of Quasi on there, uh, a man in the news right now. Uh, so throughout this market cast, I'm going to avoid touching on the intricacies of economics and leave that to others. And I am very much going to avoid touching on the politics of the current policies in place. We just want to talk about what we've got. We want to talk about what we're facing and we want to talk about how that's what results that that is actually going to bring. So uh, what are my qualifications? I make no apologies for sticking this old picture up. Uh, these are the qualifications. For the last 40 years, I have been working with builders the length and breadth of the UK to sell their products in a whole variety of markets. From the mid 80s, the mid to late 80s, where our job was basically keeping site launches secret, uh, to the uh, 1990, 91, 2008, 9 uh, dire markets where there was some real ingenuity needed to get these products moving. And what happens is over those 40 years, you build up a visceral feeling about what's going on. Things just start to happen. Those little pitter-pat drops of rain on a sunny day that actually make you feel that something's changing and a market's moving, you just get a gut feel. So if you like, it's that that I use to qualify the comments that I'm going to make and the projections that I'm going to offer you uh, during this presentation. Let me take you through what's worrying me and I, I hope you're going to excuse me turning around and reading some of these lines off the screen because I only wrote this thing about 90 minutes ago. Um, so that's the way we are at the moment, isn't it? That's how febrile this is. This is literally a situation that is changing all the time. Well, here we go. We all know that the pound plummeting to new depths, record depths, although it's recovered a little bit this morning in Asian markets, I understand, I understand it's up to about a dollar eight now, but that plummeting pound 
will undoubtedly exert great big pressure on interest rates in an upwards direction. You don't need to be an economist to know that. And so we've already got the markets, traders that are working on the basis that interest rates, base rates will be five and a half percent. Uh, this time next year, whether they're right or wrong, who knows? But that is what they're pricing in right now. There's also been a comment that they're not going to wait until the next MPC meeting uh, in November before they review interest rates again. Although yesterday the bank have come out to calm nerves and say they will wait. But you can be pretty sure that come that next meeting that we will see, well, definitely going to see an increase. There's every chance it could be a hundred, a full hundred basis points or in old money, 1%. So that's gonna to happen too. This is a really worrying element here. The financial institutions are already starting to withdraw products. I'll touch on that in a little more detail in a moment because that is breaking news from this morning. Halifax, Virgin Money, they're actually withdrawing mortgage products that are on offer at the moment. And it's a really interesting thing to do to look at the shelf life of the mortgage products that are on the, on the market right now. Consumer confidence is an, at an all time low. We'll spend a little bit of time delving into that. We have got the classic stuff that you pick up just in every day dealing with the developers and with agents around the country. And we can all see them. We can all see them. We've got sales rates slowing. And my stab at the moment on new build is that we're probably around 0.5, in between 0.5 and 0.6 a week, where just a few months ago we were running at around one a week. So we see those slay, uh, sales rates slowing. We are seeing chains collapse. And that's something that, that, that has a huge impact uh, on the new homes industry and it leads to rising cancellation rates. Now, I talk to people all the time, I was rubbing shoulders with a group of developers just last week and it is fascinating. We always factor in a cancellation rate in the industry of 12 to 15 percent. Anything below 12 percent is really a very very good position. Anything above 15 percent starts to give cause for concern uh, and we went north of 15 generally uh, a little while ago and in some cases where these dodgy chains, these, these delicate chains have been rattled a bit and that your sleeves have been shaken, we've seen cancellations drop out and I think cancellation rates are soaring at the moment. And certainly I would hazard a guess, and it's a really difficult number to actually get your head around because not everybody tells you everything, but I would hazard a guess they're probably north of 20% right now. The classic D word, down valuations, and we're starting to hear that being mentioned again at marketing meetings all around the country. And the other thing that really bothers me is that I'm reading property market crash on social media websites, uh, in the mainstream media. It is starting to become a phrase that's in common parlance uh, across the UK. That's the stuff that's worrying me. Let's unpick some of that. Let's kick off with the consumer confidence. I spend a fair bit of time on this chart most months because it is such an accurate predictor of the market. And I make no apologies for saying that when we looked at this chart in a lot of detail three months ago, it, I was saying then that this is a bellwether for a market that's in transition and is moving downwards. That was before the budget and before the plummeting pound. Um, but there is no question that this trip down here from January, which started before Russia invaded Ukraine, by the way, and, and we started to see all the energy crisis, this was already in train at this point. It has presaged the market that we're currently facing. So, so this, is, this market actually is coming as no surprise. I guess what makes today's market cast more significant has been the pressure, upward pressure on interest rates and the issue with mortgage availability. But those off to one side, the market that we're currently seeing is really no shock to me. And I think that for the professionals in the industry, you know that too, you know that too. And this is a really good <laughs> bellwether of, of what's happening. This is our canary slide and now allowing us to see forward. And if you take a look at some of these measures down here, these are the lowest they've ever been. This survey was introduced by national opinion polls that GFK acquired 
back in 1974. So we're talking almost 50 years ago. And these here, certainly the, the red line here, which is the overall index score, is the lowest on record. So the lowest since the survey has been running. This blue line here, which is what the population or 2000 sample members of the UK population actually think is gonna to happen to the economy. Is it gonna get better or is it gonna get worse in the next 12 months? Well, you can see where that sits at the moment. That's minus 68. And I deliberately have used the word plummet uh, in my description because I think that is a worthwhile emotive word to use when you look at these record lows. And a, a, a line here that I think it really does matter, and that is people's personal finances. Are your personal finances going to get better or worse over the next 12 months? Look at this. That has actually slumped now to minus 40. And significantly, that is 45 points lower than where it was a year ago and is also an all-time record low. These are important numbers. They cannot be ignored. They are actually flagging up for you how sentiment is going to be over the next three to six months and where the market is going to be in the next six to nine months. In my view, the market over the next three months, well, that die is already cast. Uh, and I'll try and demonstrate why I believe that to be the case. This is a slide that came out of last month's, uh, my housing market uh, report for last month. This has started to get much more important. It was, a, it was a measure that we almost discarded over the last five years, 10 years or so, because interest rates have been so low that the old fashioned long run average, four and a half times earnings, anything above four and a half, anything above five times earnings, then the market is starting to get stressed, really wasn't an issue anymore when interest rates were running around two, two and a half percent. But now we see interest rates starting to climb. And bear in mind, people are chasing down these fixed rate mortgages and they're trying to remortgage to get new fixed rates at the moment. But bear in mind that if they slip out of fixed rate right now, the average bar the basket of average rates, SVR, standard variable rates for mortgages right now is north of 5%. It's 5.1%. Suddenly this now starts to matter. So when you get a house price to earnings ratio that is actually touching seven or seven and a half, there's real stress in there. And this has to be a concern. And this is another thing that is putting stress on prices. Please bear in mind, we are still on the section of stuff that's worrying me right now. We'll come to the better things in a moment or two. I have to talk about mortgage rates. I have to talk about interest rates. Obviously, I leave the charts on there without the numbers, just so you can see the traje tra trajectory. Not easy to say at 8.30 on a Tuesday morning, but you can see where they're headed. You don't need me to be telling you that, but probably what it is worth looking at here is as at the end of last month, and these are the latest numbers that I've got on the, from the Bank of England website. You can see where we are. Where we are. So a two-year, 90% loan-to-value uh, mortgage has hit the 4% mark. And, and, and we could see that happening, couldn't we? And of course, now, you know, the, these numbers now are three and a half weeks old. Well, they're horribly out of date. You, you can probably add another percentage point on there if you can get the product. Uh, and if you look at 75%, loan to value mortgages over varying uh, terms. Look at this then. So for a five year 75 loan to value mortgage, that is all also pushing 4%. Like I say, new numbers due out any moment. Uh, so th th these are a few weeks old, but that gives you the direction of travel. Uh, and I guess really endorses the importance of the stress testing that was brought in uh, uh, by the last, well, by the, uh, this government, I guess, but, but, but by the last team uh, that were there uh, um, just to ensure that mortgage finance that was taken out following the crash of 08, 09 was much more sustainable. Uh, and that obviously counts for the institutions as well as the uh, borrowers. This is something that is eating away at me. For those of you that have seen you know, the market cast five and four, and, and you've seen my matrix of things that I believe 
really have a tangible effect short and midterm on the market and the way the prices and volumes are going to move, you will know how much importance I place on mortgage availability. It's a really simple thing for me. If you can't get a mortgage, you can't buy a house. It, it, it really is that straightforward. And well, this is, this is, well, this is a 27th of September release off um, Property Eye uh, website, a really good daily bulletin, Property Eye. And here we go, mortgage lenders temporarily withdraw mortgage products. Uh, this word turmoil, it, it's such an emotive word. And that's the sort of stuff that's feeding through into mainstream media. And you can see Halifax, Virgin Money, Skipton and so on have actually temporarily taken their products off the shelf because they can see that interest rates are, are rising so quickly that they've actually taken um, stuff off the shelf. Uh, Moneyfax said on the, I think, 12th of September, their press release was that, that mortgage products fell by over 500 in August around 3,900 on offer, and that's almost 1,500 products fewer than there were on offer as we came in to the start of this year. The shelf life of a mortgage product now, I've got to tell you, that says 28 days in September. In August, that number was 17 days. So, uh, so the, the products are taken off because they are uh, because the interest rates are moving so quickly and are so volatile, these products are just not staying available. This is a massive worry for me. And if there is one thing that makes me concerned about my forecast over where we're going to be in the next three and the next six and nine months, it's not knowing where that's going to go. Uh, uh, so whatever... Well, if you make any forecast, if you make any prediction, you have to make assumptions. You are making assumptions on things that are going to happen and things that aren't going to happen. So you have to make some assumptions around here. But this sits at the back of my head as one of my major concerns. OK, that's hopefully most of the stuff that worries me out of the way, most of the bad stuff out of the way. I'm quite sure that from a lot of you, for a lot of you that are actually watching this, there are all sorts of other concerns uh, on the supply side as much as anything else with the availability of trades, the availability of product and their cost and so on. I, I get that. We're just looking here at the demand side for right now. Um, I don't think we're going to see a crash. This is a dangerous moment for me because this will go, this will, it's a matter of record, but I am confident as I can be that there will not be a crash. Why? Well, the changes in the stamp duty uh, rates in the budget, I was going to put a whole section in, in here about the budget, but there was just never going to be enough time to do it. But the stamp duty rates you'll all be familiar with. You don't need me to stick up a slide telling you where the changes have come. The, the most significant one, I think, for us is the raising of the threshold rate. Uh, and the doubling of the threshold rate uh, up to 250k. Um, and, and that will make a difference. And I, I think I've put in there, Right Move actually published a uh, press release saying that the traffic on their website jumped by 10% following the uh, announcement in the budget about the relaxation of stamp duty rates. Some people claim that stamp duty rates actually don't affect volumes or the way that people react. I'll give you some data on that in a moment. And I'll tell you how I, I feel about that. The employment market is still red hot. There are more vacancies in the UK than there are people looking for work. All sorts of measures being talked about right now about allowing more immigration and bringing people back in. I'm not quite sure what the whole Brexit thing was all about. But, but like I say, I'm not going to get into politics. Uh, but one thing's for sure. Everyone is looking for people. So that that employment market is still really hot and that underpins prices. You can't, you can't odds that. Supply is still restricted. There is still less supply than there is demand. The demand side, it's changing. I'll show you that in a minute. It's changing, but it's changing slowly. So you still have demand exceeding supply. That's really important. The lifestyle changes that we all talked about 
so much immediately after the second lockdown where we talked about the race for space and people wanting better lifestyles, hybrid working, a little bit of working from home, a little bit of working in the office, what that meant, people having an office, people having outdoor space, all of that drove the market, particularly in the larger three and four bedroom uh, properties. And that is still having an effect even now. And you can see that with the varying rates of increase from the different property types, like the two bed apartments up into three bed and four bedroom houses. The falling pound has lots of effects, lots of negative effects, but one really positive effect it has is it encourages foreign buyers. I have um, every confidence that we will see a surge in interest for foreign money, particularly in the capital, in London and, and Manchester and other, uh, Birmingham and other key uh, centres around the UK. Apologies to anyone in Bristol that I've not counted you in there. Leeds, Brad, shall I? No, no. Loans and lenders are still, uh, they are now stress tested to much higher levels than they were before. There is much better uh, liquidity in the market than there was in our last crisis in 2008-9 that was built very much on uh, paper walls. Uh, this, this gives me confidence uh, that, that the market can withstand quite a few shocks. These things are significant and that is why I don't think we are going to see a cliff edge crash. I think we're going to see a correction. Quick word on stamp duty. For those people that don't believe that stamp duty is a factor, this is the HMRC publication of volumes in the UK, the volume of sales in the UK of any residential property with a value over 40K. Look at the spikes. So this was the stamp duty, the two pronged stamp duty holiday, or in fact, three pronged because they extended it, didn't they, at the end? So they are, they are the three prongs there in volumes. That was the stamp duty change. Remember the, like the stepping change over there? That little one, even that little one back there was another stamp duty change. People hate paying stamp duty. It is one of our most hated taxes. It's right up there with inheritance tax. People hate paying it and that is reflected in volumes. I'd be happy to have an argument as to whether or not it actually affects overall volumes across a period. I think that's a different argument, but in terms of what it does as a short-term shot in the arm stimulus, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind it does affect volumes, and I think that proves it. Mortgage approvals sit, and here's the number here, as at the end of July, they're the latest numbers I've got, but they're sitting there at 63, 64,000. Mortgage approvals at that sort of rate means a volume of about 100,000 sales uh, in a month. That is our pre-COVID average, five-year average. This is business already written, so it means that we can be confident about the volumes over the next three months and they're going to be there at about 100,000 a month. If you look at the various indices, and, I'm, and I know now we're in our last few minutes and I've got some important stuff I want to cover, and we've seen all these, but you've got, the, the indices are still very much there. And, so, and even the ones like Rightmove, which are asking price indices, are still in the positive. They saw a slight uptick in September. If you get a chance, Nip onto the Right Move website and have a read of this quote. Um, th this, this guy, Tim Bannister, is Right Move's Director of Property Science. Where was I when the advert for that job went out? Because I'd love to be the Director of Property Science. But he says in here that the housing market continues to be extremely resilient and he believes it will continue to be so. Okay, you could argue that he's got a sort of vested interest in there. Uh, <laughs> the RICS survey for August, which was published, I think, the second week in September, has now finally gone on their website. It did make me wonder whether the reason they weren't putting it on the website was that they were worried about the well-being of their members, some of whom, when they saw it, might have flung themselves off of tall buildings. Uh, just really quickly, here's the newly agreed sales uh, from... Uh, August, uh, and you can see where we are there. These are, this is worse, this is better. That's the balance. Um, these are new vendor instructions. I don't think that needs a lot of comment, does it, on the few minutes that we've got left. These are new buyer inquiries. I, I'm hoping you're sort of getting the message now. This is us 
running towards the end of the summer market, to be fair, but this is August, don't, certainly don't forget. You can see where we are. And this, these are regional price expectations, where the agents and the surveyors believe prices are gonna go over the next three months, very strongly in negative. And as I confidently predicted, the stock per agent continues to climb. And this is from, that's data from almost 14,000 agent branches around the UK. So that I think we can pretty much rely on. The regional variations in the market are huge. Uh, this is the Zoopla index from July. Nottingham almost 11% positive inflation down to Aberdeen at minus 1% inflation. So important when you are looking at your forecast going forward and how this market's going to move. It's massive, isn't it? When you've got a 12, 13, 14% variation in regional markets around the UK, that's so important. Here's where my matrix was when I was putting this presentation together last week, getting ready to do today. That's where it all sat. This was the stuff that I believe could really adversely affect the market. General inflation in here. Here's that, that shark there in, 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 the, in the depths, mortgage availability. At that point for me, it sat down here. Low consumer confidence, affordability, rising mortgage rates for me were, were probably the, the, the biggest threat to the market. And up in here um, was the hot employment market is giving a positive effect. These were in blue because this is stuff that the developers can introduce to make the market more positive, discounts, financial planning and products. Right now, the developer's best friend is a creative and thoughtful and powerful uh, independent financial advisor uh, and low supply, high demand. And then suddenly the budget happened and everything else that went along with it. And this thing literally over this uh, last 24 hours morphed from being there um, into being there. And suddenly now, mortgage availability, which has the maximum negative effect, has moved to maximum high impact. And right there with rising mortgage rates, rising interest rates, of course, which accelerates the low affordability that I've talked about. And consumer confidence also moves up. Funnily enough, the high uh, running costs, uh, inflation took a tiny tick back last month because of fuel costs coming down. Um, but so that's moved back slightly. Look at these two here. These are from the budget. So here are the stamp duty uh, changes, which will have a positive effect. And of course, the income uh, rate uh, taxes. So the national, the reversal of the national insurance increase uh, and the 1% uh, cut off the basic rate down to 19p. These are all gonna have a positive effect too. And you can see then low supply, high demand still sits up there and the things that the developers can choose to do and you can choose where to put those on your matrix. So the combined effect of this new matrix then, this is where I see the market going over the next few months. This is according to the, the nationwide uh, national average. That's what's already done, dusted. Here's September, October, November, and December for me. I still believe we're gonna end the year at six, 6% 6 inflation. Um, I said it, I've been saying it for months and months and months. I still believe that that's the case. If you look how prices are affected to get to this position, this is how prices have gone, average prices have gone so far to get to where we were at the end of August. Nationwide numbers for September will come out at the end of this week and we'll see whether this is correct. But for prices uh, for, to achieve these inflationary numbers by the end of the year, we will get price falls. So although I am saying that we are gonna end the year in positive inflation and I believe we will at 6%, that does mean there will be average price falls before we get to the end of the year it's really easy to confuse those two elements. And I've left myself no time for such an important subject, but for the developers uh, amongst you watching this, this is something you have to be so careful of. It's what I'm calling the double whammy. I write about this in uh, next month's House Builder. The new homes premium we've all talked about, down the years we used to refer to it as being about 10%. Do you remember it used to be about 10%? I've spent a lot of time recently trying to quantify what that new homes premium really is. And it's 
very, very difficult indeed. The best source of information I can find is the land registry, which actually logs new, all new, and all uh, existing property sales. But number one, their stuff is it's really out of date. The latest um, data and information I can get goes back to March 22. But what happens, as you would expect, is that at times when the market gets difficult, these lines contract. It might amaze you to know that in the time from uh, uh, 2005 up until two, 2022, the last 17 years, that they have been plotting these lines, the average new homes premium, the average difference in price between the two is actually 23%, probably double what most of us used to think of as a, as a regular thing. But that 23% is an average and has been squeezed down as low as 14% back here as we came out of the 0809 recession and up to 45% here as the market has expanded and so people couldn't buy secondhand property so they would pay top dollar for new. Well, let me tell you, uh, as a confident prediction, that is gonna change and that gap is gonna come down. And if you think about it, even if it just went from its current 40% down to its long run average of around 20%, that equates to about 50K for an average priced plot. It will be easy for a developer to be caught by number one, a market that's actually slowing quite quickly. And number two, for their product to come down in price much more rapidly than the secondhand or existing property because of the closing of that gap. Something that we need to be really on our toes about like I say, I write in more detail about that in House Builder. So in summary, with I think two minutes over time, my apologies. There will be price falls before the end of the year. There is no question about that. But I am equally certain that the average inflation across the year, according to the nationwide, will stay in positive. Regional variations are going to be massive. So if we're talking about 6% average inflation across the country, when you've got regional variations as much as 14% from one end to the other, the crucial nature of looking at each regional market and assessing each site on a micro basis becomes ever more apparent. Making the very, very best of, uh, of the available market and being as commercial and aggressive uh, as is necessary in more difficult markets. I believe that quarter one of next year, we'll see a correction. I th I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident that will be the case. I do not believe, believe it will be cliff edge. And uh, there we go, I've staked, I've saved, uh, painted my, uh, paint, what's it, nailed my colors to the mast, that's it, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, we'll see volumes start to fall, and I think next year we may even see volumes under a million, and that's the first time for a long time. Uh, but but you, let me, I, 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 that's not a full, fully qualified prediction at this stage. I'll do that more towards the end of the year. Quarter two in 2023, well, that is gonna be so heavily in influenced by decisions that are made over the next few weeks even, and months, both fiscal and monetary, where the monetary where the bank take interest rates, fiscal, the political decisions that are driven by all sorts of inputs, uh, those will have an effect on the market. And it would be a foolish person indeed who would put a load of numbers now into a chart and say that's where next year's market's going to go because there are so many variables that are out with our control. Um, and uh, it, it, we have no idea what they're going to be and how the markets are going to react. Okay, I've run over by about three minutes. I hope what I've squeezed in there. So there, were, there weren't the same number of charts and the same amount of data. Somebody once said that a man without data or a person without data is just a person, another person with an opinion. I promise you there's a lot of data behind this. I've just stripped it out of the deck because there was so much other stuff to say. Uh, but, I, I, but I think that the conclusions um, are, are what we face as we move into the uh, last quarter of the year. Thank you very much for watching this morning. Uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed presenting that to you. And I look forward to seeing you on next month's market cast. Thanks to Hannah, to Joan and to James, uh, the production team this morning. And I hope you have a great winter quarter. Thanks. Bye.